Hey everyone, uh, very nice to meet you. Good morning, my name is Roman. I'm with a company called Expansio. So, uh, and today we're going to discuss a marvelous new gadget we develop within our company. To begin with, I happen to be a serial entrepreneur, and so far I have contributed to building and sold three companies in computer vision and esports and in fintech. And for the last two years, I am, I'm on a new exciting path of you know, developing the next generation of computing. And to begin with, let's talk about computers overall. Uh, you know, I was born in 1990, I'm 33, and I witnessed uh, this path from computers being almost non-existent, non-existent to what we have now, to the overwhelming presence of computers. Of course, this is not how I saw them for the first time. Uh, but um, you see, my grandfather was a pioneering engineer who designed those mainframes back in the 50s and 60s. And he filled me with tales about those, you know, room-feeling machines able to do math and seen before. And that is sort of, you know, ignited a spark within me, a lifelong spark. And that's how I saw computers for the first time. Uh, back in the 90s, our family didn't have one yet, but one of my friends had. And this looked for me as, you know, as a true marvel of technology. Uh, back then, I also saw this one, the phone which was more similar to what we have now. So, let's so to say the phone without the cord. <laughs> And uh, that was marvelous to being able to call anyone uh, anytime you want. But let's move further in time. My first computer, he did not appear until 20,000s. And you know, guys, I, I vividly remember the day, the moment my father brought this to our flat. Uh, now this device may look, you know, almost outdated, almost as outdated as those mainframes. But back then, that seemed marvelous, being able to, to search those early web pages, which all seemed like a portal to another dimension. Back then, we also got those little tiny friends, Blackberries, and so on. And that generally, that was the time when new gadgets popped up, kept popping up around us, and uh, first video cameras appeared, laptops. Actually, I remember my father, when, when he bought the first video camera, he was obsessed with documenting everything, our school holidays, and et cetera, et cetera. But then, that all was before. Then something truly magical happened. iPhone was introduced. Mr. Jobs defined the whole concept of the world we live in. He defined that the main computer of humanity is a flat screen phone. Either iPhone or Android or Windows or whatever, you name it. Uh, but thing is, iPhones ushered the era of touch screens, the era we live now. Of course, uh, 2010, that was the time when, uh, well, basically, the, those devices did not differ too much from the previous era, but they uh, became more accessible. And I even got my first, uh, my first iPad before I entered the university. So, here we are now. Here's what we have today, the main computing setup of humanity, flat screen phone and a laptop. But are those enough? Those aren't enough. Me, I traveled here uh, from Dubai for two days. 
just two days to, you know, to deliver a speech, to have a walk uh, in Vienna, and to head back to the office. I'm going to show you what I have brought with me in my backpack. Two pair of earphones, bigger ones for music, uh, because, well, integral part of the day, and smaller ones for, uh, for, well, basically being able to call and to conduct Zoom calls. Then wristwatches, then, well, everybody has their weaknesses. I'm very much into gaming. That is why I brought my Steam Deck with me. And of course, an iPad to review presentations, including the one I deliver now. Those, those are the things I left at home. Uh, many gadgets. This is just an ordinary, ordinary setup of an ordinary family, just in order to be able to conduct an everyday activity. Uh, but, well, are they really smart? I think, well, to be honest, they're not that smart. And just remember how many times have your, you know, you dropped your phone, praying that's still in one piece. That's crazy. Then, let's not forget that, well, one gadget might be light, but many of them are heavy and they're not interchangeable. So basically, I have to carry at least three computers with me, laptop, iPhone, and wristwatch just to carry everyday activities. The battery, of course. Uh, well, I think, uh, well, I even struggle sometimes which gadget to charge overnight because I have too many gadgets and there aren't simply as much sockets in my apartment as needed in order to charge them. And let's not forget that they harm. They do harm. They harm our eyesight. They harm, uh, they harm uh, planet because, you know, our constant consumption of electronics takes toll on the environment. But, well, I delivered an extensive and very emotional speech about current state of gadgetry. But what's the next step? Wouldn't it be cool to have a device that will unite, that will merge all your screens into one? Wouldn't it be cool to have a gadget that will actually provide, for, provide us with superpowers like supervision and zoom? At least, wouldn't, the last but not the least, wouldn't it be cool to have a gadget that will actually reduce the screen time and restore our eye contact? We at Expansio, we are a true deep tech company aiming to develop the next generation of computing. And bang, we really do believe that one of the form factors of the future might be a contact lens. And guys, that's not the future I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. We already do have a few prototypes actually three prototypes in our lab in Dubai. So my partner, Valentin, is going to cover this later, but just, just, to, just to tell. Well, first of all, this gadget will provide for an extended reality experience for content consumption. Videos, just put this video whatever you want and keep looking while in train or in plane or in space or whatever you are. Then, of course, social media. Human homo sapiens is a social social animal, and we need to use our messengers, our uh, social networks, and so on. Then, of course, what I love the most is, of course, gaming. You will be able to play your favorite games, like three, AAA games, whenever you are, like in a subway. The last but not the least is the uh, non-invasive health monitoring. The lens has a few sensors measuring your well-being, your temperature, your eye dryness, etc., etc., and will provide you with a convenient advices like reduce coffee intake, your blood pressure is high, or quit chat to this guy, he irritates you. Um, thirdly, it will grant superpowers like night vision. And of course, 
the last but not the least is privacy and security. We have built in three layers of security uh, in order to protect your information and in order to, you know, prevent bad guys taking control from, from, from the good guys, from the goodies, basically. <laughs> uh, and this, as you can see on the screen, the, you will be able to operate uh, your everyday activities, everyday life challenges like unlocking cars, paying the egg lunch, and using ATMs, etc., etc. By now, I think you might wonder, who are those guys? Is this kind of some kind of joke or, or, or what? Are they, they really believe that they uh, can do this? Well, it turns out, yes. Uh, let me tell you a few things about our company. We are Expansio. We uh, have started uh, our company almost three years ago in 2021. We're based in Dubai. Currently, there are a bit less than 50 of us, 40 of whom are um, top-notch scientists and engineers. We are ranked as top five optics labs in the world, worldwide, by BCG. And we're already top 10 uh, research uh, among top 10 research institutions in the UAE, according to Nature Index. Uh, well, and now, uh, and by the way, we have been lucky to raise more than 40 million of US dollars that, that say we are heavily funded in order to achieve this gadget. By now, we have at least three working prototypes, so in case you're in Dubai, please give me a call or just meet me at the booth, and uh, I will show you prototypes where you, you, can, you will be able to take this prototype and see image through the prototype. So that's not science fiction, that's something we have now. And now, guys, I want to introduce you my partner, Valentin, who is co-founder, uh, chief scientific, um, uh, scientific partner and CTO of the company, and basically the crazy scientist behind the company. Valentin appears to be one of the world's most well-known scientists in uh, nano optics and uh, new materials field, and he's going to deliver a speech of about what we do exactly in order to develop this gadget. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Yeah, that's me, a crazy scientist behind all this uh, madness. Yeah, my name is Valentin, and uh, I am, I'm not that crazy, actually. Uh, very boring career. I mean, I've got a master's degree in optics radiophysics, then my PhD in uh, near-field optical microscopy of photonic crystals, then 20 years of, I mean, I, I go, got all the way from PhD student to professor at different universities all around the Europe. So, and um, yeah, it's not that much time I have. So I will do a quick overview of what we are doing, just highlight the basic uh, technological issues we are fighting and uh, develop. Uh, so uh, there were already several companies, actually, they still exist, uh, who are actually trying one way or another to, to, to create uh, smart contact lenses. The most uh, famous one, that probably Mojo Vision, I think uh, many people heard about that. Uh, about the company, they did a really impressive job for the last 10 years, even though actually there are any other, I mean, there are other companies like Innovega, Inweeds, many others. So uh, in a certain moment, uh, Mojo actually decided to do a pivot, so they actually just uh, changed the direction towards developing of micro displays. Uh, so we actually really admire the, all the job that was done by this great company and, uh, and actually congratulate uh, them with uh, just a close round of funding. Uh, they actually gave a hope that uh, it's doable. So uh, we just believe that uh, one should actually change a basic paradigm, uh, paradigm of the approach uh, just to use a new, a smarter materials in order to, to do something uh, really smart and compact. 
And uh, let me briefly go through steps how we actually approach in our aim. So we use novel materials. We use uh, artificial intelligence to handle those materials to find the best ones. And then uh, we use all our, exp all our expertise in uh, advanced uh, optoelectronics and photonics to actually build uh, some prototypes. Uh, I'm actually going to, to briefly describe each of those uh, steps or points one by one, but uh, let's start with the novel materials. These two guys, uh, Andre Game, Konstantin Novoselov, uh, scientist from Manchester University, got Nobel Prize 2010 for breaking through experiments with uh, first two-dimensional material graphene. And actually, that's a truly unique material, uh, already changed significantly and continue to change uh, significantly the different sectors of our everyday life, like uh, bio, health, uh, I don't know, energy, uh, construction, and so on and so on. Um, so uh, we actually uh, lucky to collaborate directly with Konstantin, and uh, I know both of them personally. We have plenty of papers published together. So actually, 13 years uh, already passed from that moment, and uh, now we don't have one material. We have like more than 200 different low-dimensional materials with different properties, like graphene, it's a semi-metal, uh, but there are plenty of others that are semiconductors or dielectrics. So semi-metals, I mean, conductors, they are good for doing flexible, transparent electronics, but playing with uh, dielectrics and semiconductors, you can actually build uh, optoelectronics or photonics. And uh, there are actually more. You can take different low-dimensional materials, put them together, and create so-called Van der Waals materials. Basically, there is a unique opportunity to create uh, materials with optoelectronic properties on demand. Uh, that's actually what we also do. And uh, all those new materials, they're perfectly suitable, actually. At least we believe so, for making uh, smart, wearable optoelectronic devices. So first of all, they operate in a very wide range of uh, wavelengths. It's very important for, uh, for the electronic devices. Uh, they have, many of them have optical transparency, very wide range of optical transparency. Uh, I would say the very unique feature, many of them actually have the optical anisotropy characterized, not just optical anisotropy, giant optical anisotropy. That's what is widely used by us. Uh, because uh, this useful phenomena, actually, so it's uh, doubling incoming light into two uh, beams, usual, unusual, uh, it's a very, uh, I would say, essence of many modern devices like filters, uh, I don't know, diffusers, uh, polarizers, and, and so on and so on. Unfortunately, in uh, our usual optical materials, they actually possess a very low anisotropy. We actually found materials with a giant anisotropy, the biggest actually on the planet, which actually allows us to do and control light at the really nanoscale. And then, of course, uh, they are also characterized by high refractive index, which is also very important for photonical applications that give you a huge power over the light at the nanoscale. And uh, as I mentioned, there are hundreds of those materials. How to choose the proper one? You know, one, of course, can choose this you know, way of medieval alchemist where you try different uh, combinations, alloys, that could take years. So we use uh, artificial intelligence. So we will put some data taken out of the available uh, Databases, literature, experiments, simulations, we put it uh, to, to learn or to teach our uh, evolutionary algorithms behind our uh, approach. Then we do pre-processing and then at the output we have, we can predict very efficiently uh, properties and behaviors of our materials or uh, could propose the novel uh, designs for the materials and actually to find the best computational methods and algorithms to, to deal with our, with our problems. And all this actually used to, to, to do uh, advanced optics. Uh, what do I mean in terms of advanced optics? Uh, everyone probably familiar with uh, traditional optics. I mean, the most uh, famous representative, that's uh, lens or usual lens, uh, the very base of magnifier glass. So uh, we don't really change the idea much, we still try to play with uh, 
uh, face fronts, with speed of light, with the face of light, but uh, because of the new materials, we can do it at nanoscale. So we can shrink uh, our beams of light. So basically, we are beating the diffraction limit significantly and uh, uh, manage to achieve uh, really, really high concentration of light at the nanoscale. So and can efficiently manipulate with that power. And what you can do with that? Uh, you can do biosensors sensing. So that's one of our favorite uh, areas. Uh, by using two-dimensional materials, we actually managed to uh, deliver one of the sensitive, probably, I mean, I think right now it's uh, the, the most sensitive biochemical sensor. It 50% beats whatever available on the market right now. So this is uh, because of the use of very rare topological effects on two-dimensional materials. And it still it's, it's very complex. So basically, using two-dimensional materials, low-dimensional materials, otherwise get your structures, we were able actually to, oh, well, we are able. We are still struggling with some of the sensors, but we are developing variety of sensors, some of them already in a prototype shape, others still waiting for, for being delivered. But nevertheless, we can measure uh, uh, interocular pressure with a high efficiency, uh, high, uh, heat rate, temperature, cortisol, dry eye level, still fighting with glucose. That's uh, not that simple to do, but nevertheless, so you can do sensing. You can also actually play with uh, extended reality. What we are trying to do, we use this material to create a holographic elements. So lenses, meta lenses, meta surfaces. So all this is done to actually to give uh, the lens user the opportunity to play with uh, extended reality experience. So we already built, Roman mentioned, we have some prototypes indeed. Uh, so here you can see a typical one. It's already a holographic screen. Uh, embedded into the uh, typical uh, lens. It's a soft lens. As you can see, you can squeeze it. You can, I mean, uh, some of uh, our guys already did try to put it into eye. Actually, it works pretty well. But uh, last week on a GTEx, we had, uh, let's say, optical table demonstration. We called hollow box, where you can bring the lens as close to your eye as possible and actually see the images. That's it. It works pretty well. So then, of course, uh, night vision, Roman already mentioned. So the usage of these uh, unique materials actually allow you to realize this very efficient up conversion of low energy and longer wavelengths at uh, infrared to the high energy uh, visible spectrum range. So which uh, opens a direct uh, possibility to, to see uh, at night, actually. Uh, still uh, struggling with this, but there are some uh, clear uh, success we, we already got here. So, and uh, here is uh, a sketch of our device. Uh, so, I already mentioned biosensors. There are some solar cells integrated there, batteries. Uh, holographic display, uh, adaptive uh, optics, just to deal with uh, people if they have some problems with their vision. Then uh, antenna, we also integrated their narrow interfaces just to try to manage the operation of the lens with the power of your, of your brain. Uh, it's, it works already somehow, yeah. So, and all this is uh, basically within just a regular contact lens. Uh, the, our final aim, of course, the soft lens, uh, even though we also have some prototypes with the rigid lenses. It's, it's, somehow it's a bit simpler. Here we just try to, to, to use the best experience from our, let's say, ancestors like uh, Moji Vision. So, and, oh, sorry. Uh, so, the, our main aim is to basically move the modern optoelectronics uh, from silicon wheeler to low dimensional materials wheeler, graphene wheeler. So, which we believe uh, the ultimate answer to, to to the many problems and struggles of the modern, modern technology. So let's uh, change uh, the world together. Thank you very much for your attention.